Hi everybody, um, I'm here to do a quick lesson on circles and arcs. Now uh, when we talk about a circle, specifically what we're talking about, see there's the word circle, we're talking about a set of points that are equidistant, which means equal distance from a given point known as the center. So in this case, here is my center. Not the yoga type, but this is where it all starts. In order for it to be a circle, all points have to be the same distance away, or all points on this line anyway, have to be the same distance away from the center point. If they're not, it's not a circle. If you had a car tire and you rotated about the center, you would want it to move smoothly. If you change where that center is located or what you consider to be the center is located and put it over here you're going to get a very very bumpy ride so the whole point of it I suppose is to make sure that all points on the circle itself are the same distance away from the center now there's a few things about the vocabulary that we need to go over probably uh, a line that goes from one side of a circle to another and goes to the center is known as a diameter right there the official definition is a segment goes from one side of a circle to another through the center. That's important. So here is my diameter. Make sure it goes to the center. If it doesn't, it goes from here to here. That's something else. We don't talk about that just yet. It's actually a chord, but nonetheless. If I have a line that goes from the center of a circle to a single point on the circle, that is referred to as a radius. that works out pretty well and I apologize for the camera zooming in and out at its will but uh, you know not the best quality materials uh, a radius once again is a segment that stretches from the center of a circle to the circle itself the last thing we have to talk about is what's called a central angle central angle a central angle is a angle that has a vertex in the center. Surprisingly enough, central angle, center vertex. So here is a central angle. Here's another one. Oh, and look, here's a really big one. Or even longer, I can go from here all the way over to here. Also, central angle. As long as they have the, they have the vertex in the center, you're good to go, and you meet all the requirements of being considered a central angle. Now, Let's talk more in depth about something else. Now we're going to talk about breaking the circle into parts. When I break that circle into parts, each part is called an arc. For instance, when you have a pizza, the crust on that piece of pizza is actually the arc of that pizza because it's just a portion of the outside. Now if you eat all the pizza and the crust, that's the whole outside. That's referred to as a circumference. We'll talk about that again in just a few minutes. But first we're going to talk about just a small part of your pizza. So if I'm talking about, for instance, segment AB. So just this part. This is referred to as arc AB and I write that out with AB and then I make this pretty little roof over the top of it so it doesn't get any rain on it. Um, if I have an arc that only goes from one point on a circle and does not quite get all the way to the other side of the circle on the outside, this is referred to as a minor arc. A minor arc is less than half of the circle. So uh, my minor arcs here may be AB is a minor arc. Um, BC might be another minor arc because it's not quite uh, 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 all the way halfway around, I'm sorry. CD, there's another minor arc. Um, even AD is considered a minor arc. So I could take the blue and do this, but it would just kind of cover everything in blue and then I can't make another point that I'm trying to make. Now when I write a minor arc, it's okay just to use two letters to do that with because it, there's really no sort of confusion about what it is. Plus it specifically identifies it as a minor arc if I only use two letters. Now, 
If you've been looking in the left side of the paper here, you see major arc, and I think you know where this is headed, uh, but you're wrong. We're going to go to semicircle next. Semicircle, or a semicircle, depending on how long you want to hold that I sound out for, is um, half a circle, or half the crust of your pizza, I suppose. Probably should use the bigger marker here, but... whatever. The yellow is my semicircle. So the semicircle is halfway around. Semicircle is halfway around. Now there's actually a couple, uh, actually there's four semicircles listed. I've got ADC, and I'm going to write that as ADC, and don't forget to put the roof on top, and make sure the rain falls off, so you want to have this nice little arc arc to it. Then I've got A, B, C, which is why you have to use three letters. If I just use two, if I just use A, C, I could go this way or this way. So I have to make sure that I follow the correct path and identify it. Uh, other semicircles are DAB, uh, DCB is another one. And by the way, DCB and BCD are the same thing. So no need to write them both down, but that's a semicircle. And finally, we get to major arcs. Major arcs are greater than half, similar to how the minor was less. And the semicircle is exactly half. So what I need to make sure that I do here is find an arc that goes most of the way around, but not quite all the way around, because if you go all the way around, it's not an arc anymore. It's a circle. So I'm going to go from A all the way past C, all the way to D. Now I definitely have to make sure that I use three letters here because if I say AD, I'm doomed because I'm, you know, I could just go straight here and it's the easiest route to go. So that's why for a minor arc, use two letters to identify anything else you want to use at least three, or basically three. So I'm going to say it's uh, arc A, C, D. So my major arc here, one of them, is arc A, C, D. Now, let's talk about greater relationships that you might see when you're working with uh, arcs. There's a much smaller one with a nice glare to it. That's always nice, isn't it? There we go. That shined it out a little bit. Now, in this case, I've got arc AB, and that looks like a minor arc. And I've got another arc, uh, arc BC, and that looks like another minor arc. But if you turn it a little bit, you can see that ABC is actually a major arc. But the point that I'm trying to make here is much like a segment, which we would work on before, where... We did this whole thing where AB was the longer one, so we'd write down AB equals AC plus CB, because I can go from here to here, or I could go here to here, and then C to B, and that takes me the same distance. Same thing here. The measurement of angle ABC equals the measurement of AB plus the measurement of BC. So I'm going either all the way around, or I'm going part of the way and taking a little break. And then going on to the next one. Now, this M, which I didn't even circle correctly. That's good. Let's do that one instead. The M here is uh, measure. So where does that come from? Let's go back to a picture we were looking at just a few minutes ago. Right here, which is much easier to see. So from now on, I'll try to make everything this size. I'm going to name the center angle now um, E. It's very original. I'm surprised I have to actually think about that. But um, if I'm trying to find the measure of arc DC, just like that, 
what I'm going to do is look at the central angle itself, and it happens to match. So if this one is somewhere in the, if you flip it up a little bit, you can sort of tell it's a little bit less than 90 degrees. We'll say it's 75 degrees. So to find the measure of DC, that'd be 75. Uh, so the central angle measure is the same as the arc measure itself. Uh, where do we go from here? Well, there's a couple uh, problems on our assignment that relate to this, but I want to cover one more thing before we move into that, which is how do we find out what the length of an arc is? So I want to know specifically how long DC really is. So if I have measure, you're really looking for your degree sign there. So 75 degrees, for example, but you're looking for this. If you see the word length, you're looking for an actual measure. It generally, um, if we're measuring in inches, you want it in inches. Maybe it's just in units. Uh, so in order to determine this, I need to take what I know about the angle and then some more information to determine just how long it is to go from here to here. So the first thing I'm going to do is determine at least the radius of my circle because I need to find out how far around it takes to go all the way around the circle. In order to do that, I think it best if we determine what the radius is because you know how I feel about diameter. By the way, if you happen to get a question with diameter on it, so for instance this one, I can just use the flip side of the other paper so I don't have to try to reinvent the wheel on drawing a great circle because that circle was really well made considering it was mine. Go to the middle. If this is 10, you know we don't do that. We immediately convert it to a radius. In order to do that, if this is the center point, I know that it takes two of these to get all the way across. So I break it into two equal parts. So this would be 5. So my new radius is now 5. So if we use this radius and say I have this angle, we're going to do... 120 degrees on that angle, let's say. So I'm going to go down and write this information in a little table down here. I need to label these, I suppose. Um, X and Y. So the, make this Z. So angle X, Y, Z equals 120. So the measurement of arc X, Y, is also 120 degrees, which would still make it a minor arc. It only goes here. It doesn't make it all the way over to the other side there. So we're going to say it's 120 degrees. Now, in order to determine the length of XY, what are we going to do? There's a couple things we need to do first. First, we need to determine the whole thing. How much is the entire circle worth? In order to find the outside of a circle, we're going to use circumference. Circumference. Now, um, you should know the circumference formula. If you don't, you can remember the area formula. The area of a circle is pi r squared, just like the little kids say. And they're good at math. Those second and third graders, they rule. Um, and just remember that the circumference is like the uh, little brother of area. So you degrade down this square to a multiply. And so the circumference is 2 pi r. Well, I take that information. And I'm like, oh, it's a length. So I'm going to have to figure out the whole thing first. And I write that formula down. That's what I do. And that's what you are going to do, too, if you're smart. Uh, the radius, if you remember, is 5. Now, as long as you are asked, are asked for an exact answer, it is totally okay for you to go ahead and plug and play. If you're asked for an exact answer, should I say, it's okay for you to plug and play this in. Unless they tell you to define pi as 3.14 or whatever, but I'm just going to use what's in the calculator. I think the assignment usually does. So I'm going to hit this. And I'm going to be somewhat lame 
and go ahead and do just to the tenths place instead of going even further. It depends on scientific accuracy. And since they just gave me a five, I'm just going to go. I'm only willing to go to the tenths. So that's as far as I'm willing to go. Uh, so my circumference is 31.4. That could be inches or whatever measurement that they decide to use. Now, what do we do with that? We have a circumference, so we know what the whole thing is. I know now what this whole thing is. I know the whole thing. I want to know the blue. Well, technically, I guess now I want to know the green because yellow and blue make green. So I'm looking for what that green is. There's two func there's two parts of the circle that we can think about. We can think about the length, and we can also think about there's a measure. If you make one circle, that would be 360 degrees. Can we use that? Oh, wait, there's 120 degrees, so the whole thing is 360, and a part of it is 120. Hmm. But if I want a part of the circumference, wait a minute. Looks like we've got something that we can work with here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little proportion. We're going to do the ratio is the part over the whole here. So in this case, we're going to do whatever the angle measure that we have. So the measurement of the arc. So in this case, it's measurement of x, y over 360 degrees because that's the whole thing. We're going to set that equal to the whole circumference. And then whatever we're trying to find. And this x, y obviously can be anything. This, is, this should be generic. So this should just say measurement of arc, but I'm running out of room. Um, so the measurement of x, y, as you can see right there, is 120 over a total of 360. The x for circle here, uh, we're going to put, or not circle, for circumference. Circumference is 31.4. Here's my x. Now, we're just going to cross multiply and divide. So I do 31.4 times 120 is equal to 360 times x. So I do 120 times 31.4, hit enter. I get some gigantic 3,768. Then I'm going to divide by 360. gives me 10. Let's see if I can turn it into a nice fraction for myself. Oh, I can. 10 and 7 fifteenths. If you're more of a decimal person, 10.5. Because the 6 makes the 5 go up. Um, so that's all for this lesson. Uh, I'm going to make another one where I'm going to do sample problems. So you can either just end it here or stick around for the sample problems, whatever you want.